an Iceland Peninsula with no Wi-Fi. We look at the gear I got laying around on the table. We do cool, not cool. Welcome to another episode here of the Gideon's Tactical Show. I am your host, Aaron. Hey folks, so much to get to today here on this particular episode of Gideon's Tactical Show, where uh, I believe we're on episode six now. We've been cranking them out these different style completely than doing gear reviews. And uh, I really appreciate your guys' viewership on these. Love to continue to hear your guys' tweaks, thoughts, concepts. If you come up with new uh, segments and sections that you think might be a good idea, uh, would love to hear them in the comments below. But we're gonna go ahead and dive right into it today by uh, looking at an article as we look at the, our new section today that stood out to me. This is an article from about a month ago, September 6th is when I read this and captured it and really connected with me. It was just an interesting read. This is from the San Francisco Chronicle, and it's talking about a wired Icelanders seek to keep remote peninsula digital free. That's kind of the title of the topic. And as I read the article, it was really interesting to me, uh, and it kind of states this, that passengers, uh, passenger boat arrives at the bottom of, and I cannot even pronounce this, I'm going to annotate it in, Virdir Le Recef Fjordjörg. I don't know. Uh, a short inlet with a long name to drop off backpackers for a multi-day trek. A weather-beaten group that's completed the trip waits on to board, eager to get back to a part of Iceland where they can reconnect to the world via Wi-Fi. And so as you look at this concept and this, this story, basically that there's this really kind of secluded, hard to get to, I believe only by boat can you get to it. There must be like a mountain range or something in between from what I understand. Uh, Peninsula that has no Wi-Fi, and basically the rest of Iceland for the, uh, the rest of Iceland for the most part does have access to Wi-Fi, and so there's this kind of battle going on right now. Should they keep it this peninsula completely, you know, free of all electronic, you know, connection and Wi-Fi and that that type of thing, or should they allow Wi-Fi and, and more technology to be able to come part of that area? And so there's some people who want to do it. There's some people that love the seclusion and love being able to get off of the you know tech side of things and be connected to the world and just focus on nature and that type of thing and so i just thought it was a super interesting really cool article of people who uh, one of the last digital free frontiers that might be the world's most wired nation so i guess uh, iceland is really wired i believe they have wi-fi throughout the entire country and so giving them kind of this little area where they can disconnect from uh you know, information I think is super cool. I would definitely be on board and be one of those people that are like, let's keep it Wi-Fi free. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts as well in the comments below. What would you do if you lived in a world that was completely connected and we're definitely getting there? Within probably the next 10 to 20 years, most percentages of the world will be have some sort of access to either cell coverage, Wi-Fi, uh, and that type of thing. I've even read articles of, I believe, Google and, and uh, maybe it's Facebook or Amazon just trying to, to get drones up that just are like solar powered and just fly constantly, just giving off Wi-Fi signals so people can be connected. And I'm sure that they can like spy on you probably some. Um, so that's a, a downer for sure, a downside to being connected to information in that way in the World Wide Web. But uh, yeah, super interesting. If I lived in Iceland, I would definitely be like, yeah, let's keep it Wi-Fi free. Let's keep it, you know, kind of a dead zone so people can unplug and get away. And, uh, you know, that's something that I've really cherished in my own life as well. When I am able to go backpacking and camping and be able to really get out there away. And, you know, so there are some places that you can't get away from cell phone coverage and you have coverage and you, know, you just use your data plan. Um, but on our last backpacking trip, we had total dead zone by the lake that we were camping at. And then when we hit the, the 12,000 footer um, peak on the, the second day of our trek, we had some cell phone coverage that we were able to text, you know, our wives and stuff and say, Hey, we're doing all right. Love you. You know, um, post up one or two quick shots and that was it. And then, you know, we're back down the mountain, we're back in a dead zone. And that was really refreshing to ha not have internet and like you don't even look at your phone after a while you don't even think about it anymore it's not even attached to you anymore in the sense of your mind i mean and uh that's something i do not like if you were to ask me aaron what's one thing that you don't like about yourself the fact that i have a natural tendency to whip my phone out if there's more than like 30 seconds of nothing going on and just start you know crew regardless if i'm looking on amazon or blade hq for some new you know something uh you know i'm looking at instagram facebook youtube whatever and that's not healthy and i don't like it and i'm trying to figure out ways to break myself of that, 
you may be too, or I encourage you to maybe think about your life for a moment and you might want to be doing that. But um, yeah, really interesting article. I'll try to find it because it's over a month old and link it if I can below just so you can read the whole article. But yeah, think about it yourself. And I would love to hear your guys' answers if you think that they should keep it Wi-Fi free or get Wi-Fi over that particular peninsula that I am that I cannot read uh, over in Iceland. And fun fact about Iceland, from what I understand, it is the only place in the world that they still speak original Norse that's not been like tweaked or um, messed with. And there are a lot of voice recognition systems that cannot figure out. Uh, Icelandic. They can't, when you speak to it, they've tried and they just, there's something about the language and the, the, in, uh, the cantonation, all that stuff that they can't, as of yet, cannot pick up on like voice recognition software. So pretty interesting. I, I really want to go visit Iceland. And so that was well, another reason why this particular story just connected with me. And now as we get into the stuff I have on the table, this portion of the episode, I just have a bunch of stuff. This is my studio where we film a lot of the tabletop portions of the videos and where I prep for either you know backyard testing, if it's a pocket knife, or when I'm about to go out and go to the range or do whatever I'm gonna do. So um, we're about to just look at some stuff that are currently in the process of being reviewed, which is really exciting. So you can kind of get an up, you know, up and coming, like, hey, what, what, what's in the works? Um, but uh, also just want to remind you guys about Blade HQ and Amazon hyperlinks. When you guys use those hyperlinks, we get that small kickback and it continues to help me buy the majority of the products that we test out here, but, uh, spend time away from family and you know work and do all that stuff to focus here on the channel because you guys purchase through the hyperlinks. So today, all the stuff you see here that we're about to talk about, they're just in the, in the works of being reviewed. Uh, I will have hyperlinks too in the Amazon links and Blade HQ links so you can check those out if something today that we're looking at really stands out to you. Otherwise, just in general, guys, regardless of what you purchase, really helps us out when you use those hyperlinks. It helps me continue to do what we do here. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first thing is I've been using these for a while and this is actually my EDC kit, my EDC bags over here, and I'm reloading these. These are EO, I guess, EO, and I'll have a link below if I can. There we go. Uh, EO deodorant wipes. Now you get like a six pack, I think. Yeah, these are six individual ones. I think I paid $8 for. You can get up to like 24 pack over on Amazon and stuff. So again, links below. But uh, really cool because these are tea, tea tree. I've used them. They're super refreshing. Um, all organic, GMO free, da, 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 totally organic. And you like wipe your pits where if you've been sweating all day and I've had this a couple of times where I'm smelling myself I'm like, Ooh, yikes. I've been, we you know, just running around and like the deodorant quit on me at like 6 PM and I still got three more hours to go. Uh, these things rock and they're super thin. So you can put them in your wallet. You can put them in your pocket purses, EDC kits, whatever. But man, not only do they remove the sweat, but then add a really refreshing, all natural um, scent to them. And it's it's really good. So I love those. That's on the table right now. Super cool. Then um, let's see, obviously I talked about that review on this HM. This literally just came in a Streamlight Stylus MicroStream. Yeah, this is the MicroStream, but USB rechargeable. Interesting that when you hit it the first time you get the low 50 lumens and then if you double tap it you'll get the 250 lumens i wasn't really happy about that i always like high lumens first low lumens second when i opened it up started playing with it and then i read the directions they make a coyote tan version that's opposite you click it one time and you get the high 250 and you double click it to go low did not know that i'm giving you guys a heads up i'm really excited about this this thing happens to be really cool so far from what i'm messing around with today but i'm going to like you'll see a review on this but i'm going to buy the coyote version and i will be keeping the coyote version i'm not going to keep this one because i want the high loom i always and all my flashlights want high first low second that's just the way i roll next up i got this in and i'm actually going to run in some footage here in just a second we've been testing out the amp series from 511 well i got the amp um plate carrier this is like 360 degrees basically of mountability with your molly compatible stuff but we were testing out the pull strap and we had a blast at the range i'll just show you how, what that looked like <laughs> So 
So that was ultra fun. The grab handle works great. And we pulled not only myself, but my buddy Mike multiple times without any sort of tearing, ripping or anything like that. Plus obviously being able to carry plates and you know, Molly compatibility and then all the stuff you'll see in an upcoming video. Uh, check that out when it does drop here in a little bit on the amp series because they have their amp backpacks, but also their plate carriers so far is sick and I'm totally digging it. All right, we'll look at two other things here. <laughs> I Facebooked or I, instant, I made an Instagram post of this and I got some of the most hits I've ever gotten is the six inch Luzon pocket knife from Cold Steel. I paid 40 bucks, 42 bucks for this on Blade HQ. This is a six inch HCR 13 MOV pocket knife, has a liner lock with a backup safety. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's a freaking six inch pocket knife. We will be doing a review on it. I just bought it because I was like, I gotta test this out. I've never reviewed a knife that it was a pocket knife that was six inches in size. And I just thought it would be a totally fun kind of out of the box video. Uh, this review will be coming soon. If you can't wait, it's a, it's a cool, fun blade. I mean, there's some practicality to it and there's just some hilarity to it. Uh, there will be a link below for that to Blade HQ, and I think they are dropping on Amazon. They do sell a four-inch version as well uh, in the exact same design, but that thing is hilarious and awesome at the same time. Then finally, um, I'll just leave us with this for the stuff that's on the table. I did recently purchase the P4 from Essie, right there, and I purchased the JG5 from Essie. So I will be doing a head-to-head -head of these two knives, which one is better? What do I like? What I do I not like about these designs? And there are some things that are really cool about them. There's some things I'm like, really? That will be uh, hitting in the future. So stay tuned for that video coming sooner than you might think on these two guys. Just gotta get some really good field time with them before I uh, give you my final thoughts on those, but review will be on those guys coming up before you know it. Well, before we move to our next topic, let's talk sunglasses here for just a moment. Let's get real. There's two ways that you're rocking your sunglasses probably. Either you spent a couple hundred dollars on a premium uh, design and premium company, but you're terrified about dropping it, scratching it, and you basically babysit them and eventually either lose them, step on them, break them, or have your kids jack with them. Or you went to the dollar store and you bought the worst pair of sunglasses ever just because you don't care and you're gonna you know, lose them or trash them anyway in a week or two, so who cares? Well, there's another alternative with knock-around sunglasses. All their stuff is under 50 bucks. They have a custom store that you can create your own designs. They have several different designs for the whole family. They have lots and lots of options and they're under 50 bucks. Sometimes on, if you look in their sale aspects, I, I can, I've bought pairs that are like $10 and these are either polarized or at least, you know, UV uh, 400 protection, lots of different options. So check the links below over the Knockaround Sunglass Company. If you guys are um, interested in either giving gift items, you know, the holidays are coming up, you can get really inexpensive stocking stuff or sunglasses that have cool styling, but actually perform. And we love them. My whole family has them. We love them. They're fantastic. Check out those links below and it really helps us out and helps support the channel when you guys use all the hyperlinks that we offer to you below, particularly those knock around sunglasses. All right, folks, last up cool, not cool portion of the video. Uh, the cool thing is I've been reading this for way too long. It's been taking me too long. It is a very thick book. Uh, it's about 525 pages is war on the run. I got this from a friend. Uh, and the thing that made me really interested in it is it's the epic story of Robert Rogers and the quest for America's first frontier. All about the French and Indian War for the most part. I'm about halfway through it right now. Uh, I believe they do tag into the end or the beginning of the revolution by the time it's over. I have not completed it yet. Um, but it's a really fast read. It's really interesting. And it's basically the story of Robert Rogers. And I was first interested in him based off of, I think, the show um, Turn. Uh, from AMC, uh, watched that show, really enjoyed that, as uh, watched that with the, the with Ashley. And uh, one of the main characters in there is Robert Rogers. I started doing a little research, found out that there was a book. And uh, this book goes really in depth, gives a lots of stories, lots of um, hands-on, you know, like how Robert Rogers basically was one of the first people that came up with the concept of like special forces and doing things in small groups, attacking and retreating and, you know, like doing that type of thing versus just like two big armies marching at each other and blasting each other out of, out of, out of the way um, with muskets. So he kind of uh, adopted a lot of Native American um, techniques for warfare and then applied it to their technology and some of the other things that they had and was really effective against the French and Indians in the French and Indian War. Really interesting. If you don't know a lot about that, 
era of history, you'll learn a lot, and it's a uh, um, it's it's a cool it's a cool book so far. War on the Run. I will have a link in the description below over to Amazon. That's the cool thing. Not cool is the Esbit three piece cook set. I will be doing a full review on this soon where I break everything down. But this is really like the 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 thing. I tested out their little collapsing one, which was decent where I live at. Uh, I, my home is at a mile high, 5,280 feet, and then I usually trek between 8,000 and 10,000 feet. It's a long time to try and boil water, like two cups of water takes forever, like 20, 25 minutes. So I wasn't super stoked about it. I mean, it's like a good emergency thing, but it's not something I'm gonna regularly use. But when I saw this, basically, you know, you get like a two cup pot, really cool little setup here, you know, like hangs on the side. I mean, they really thought through that. And then it came with an actual like internal stove piece here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, you know, that would give some wind protection better than that little pop-up Esbit one. Uh, you know, and it just sits perfectly in there and this will fit inside. So, I mean, I thought it was like a really cool system for like 20 bucks. And uh, it does cut down on the cook time when you're using the tablets that are the solid fuel tablets. So I went out and I was really excited because I wanted to do some alcohol testing as well on alcohol, alcohol stoves. So I got an Esbit alcohol stove. So all the same brand. This is all same brand stuff, right? Really excited to drop it in and use it inside this thing and do the pot and everything's good to go. And like, I was really like, man, this might be like how, when I go day hiking, how I'm going to start boiling my water for coffee and stuff. This is designed in such a way that when you put the, the pot on, it is flush with this system and basically almost snuffs out, if not snuffs out the fuel. So you can't use the, the Esbit brand alcohol stove in this. You have to buy their bigger system, which is larger, costs more, all of that. I was super irritated. If they had literally removed this little tray, because it's that tray. Now, it's not screwed on. That's another downer. It's like studded in. So you literally have to like break it off. Then, it's, you know, like probably bend the bottom. Super annoying. If they just put a screw and then you could remove it maybe or something, that I'd be okay with. But that's literally the difference. If this little guy right here was gone, then this would sit down and I would have, you know, about that much of a gap. It would be perfect. And I think I could use the alcohol stove. That is super dumb that they did not design that to be able to be used with the alcohol stove. And so I'm not excited about that and that is not cool and basically now i gotta figure out some other type of system to use the alcohol stove so just want to let you guys know not cool that esbit did not think through that enough to allow their own alcohol stove to fit inside their three-piece kit cook set well folks there you have it i hope you've enjoyed this particular episode 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 it's been fun it's been enjoyable i've had a good time i hope you guys are enjoying these uh getting tactical shows share them with your friends family uh, let's get the the word out there. I think that this is a cool, different concept than what we normally see here uh, on the outdoor EDC survival world. So it's just fun to do this with you guys and give you different topics and food for thought and different things like that. So thank you guys. You rock. Subscribe. If you're not a current subscriber, like us on Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Uh, don't forget about the mail, mailbag. Put hashtag mailbag and you might get your question answered in an upcoming video. Finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. See you out there.